it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, October 31st. So welcome to the last day of October. Welcome to Halloween. It is a very energetic day. It always is because, of course, we're in this mystical portal, if you will. If you are those type that like to talk about portals, this is a portal. It is an alignment where we can access information details from higher realms of intelligence. Of course, the energy is very palpable. We are wrapping up what October was supposed to teach us. Again, if you want to do a little bit of a throwback, go back, listen to October's energy forecast, that overview and see how it is that your month actually lined up. And of course, the beautiful transition that we're going through here today, having the moon in Libra for the first part of the day giving us a throwback to Libra season, giving us a throwback to eclipse season, helping us to put into perspective what happened, what transpired. We are looking at things now through a different lens, a different set of eyes. And the major change, the major transformation that is taking place within us as we speak to our head, to our heart, to our soul, to our spirit is definitely going to be amplified as we move into November. Of course, the minute that we get in November, we're already in the new moon in Scorpio window. Intensity, we're in the dark phase of the moon. Having Halloween happen on the dark phase of the moon, first of all, is pretty, pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Not to mention having Halloween take place under the dark phase of the moon that happens to be in Scorpio energy, mystical as F. So hopefully you're feeling pretty good today. We do have a lot of, I'm going to say, build, tension building aspects, preventing us to kind of see things clearly until we move into that moon and Scorpio energy. And then, of course, we're just going to be bumping into the darkness, bumping into problematic areas in order for us to see things again a little bit differently from a different lens and thus kickstarting our change, our transformation through this new moon Scorpio portal. So before we get into any moon aspects, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Scorpio energy with the detective hat on, really kind of, I'm going to say, reflecting back over the past, over old conversations, old situations, old circumstances with a fine tooth comb. Again, we are using our intellect and our intuition to kind of cut the crap to see the hidden aspects, the motivations, the manipulations, if you will, of some of the relationship dynamics that, of course, popped off well under that Libra season influence and most importantly, that eclipse influence as well. We have Mercury making a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, who, of course, is retrograde in this Aries energy, helping us with this rebranding, this new version of self, this new identity that we are bringing online, that we are anchoring in, that we are definitely giving more power to. So we're starting to see where situations and circumstances that we weren't able to see up until this point, we're seeing them clearly. We're seeing where it is that we have grown, where we were put in situations and circumstances that this time last year we would have reacted badly to. We are seeing where it is that we are looking at life, the people, the world around us from a new set of eyes. We are seeing where the new version of self is absolutely operating in this present moment, pushing us into situations and circumstances to wrap up old cycles. Now, the moon, still in Libra energy at this point, going to make a harsh interaction with Uranus, the Great Awakener, who was retrograde in Taurus energy. We have Libra and Taurus energy with the common ruler of Venus. Venus currently in the Sag energy, looking for freedom, looking for independence, looking to explore and experiment with what she can do, what she can change in her physical realm to support more happiness, more joy, more safety, more security, more stability, not only in her routines, but within her relationship and financial matters as well. The moon interacting with Uranus definitely going to bring on the confusion, going to bring on the indecision, going to bring on the delusion that, of course, again, we've been thrown back into because the moon in Libra wants to remind us what we just went through, through eclipse season, what we just went through, through Libra season as well. And so we're kind of closed off. We're making things a little bit more complex, more complicated than they need to be. We definitely have more energy 
energy, therefore more anxiety coursing through our veins at this particular point. And instead of being open minded to what we could change, we're kind of tipping the scales against our favor and we're holding on to the old for dear life. We're actually trying to convince ourselves, talk ourselves into the fact that we don't need to change, that we don't need to grow, that we don't need to evolve. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mercury, again, ruler of the mental plane in Scorpio energy. This is our heart and our head kind of getting on the same page, Mercury and Scorpio energy saying, hey, moon and Libra, you talking yourself into Delulu land, not helping things. We need to kind of focus on the matter of fact here. There are new details. There is new information. There are new perspectives emerging that is very, very clear on what needs to end, what needs to die, who you need to let go of, what you need to bring to a finality, to a completion point. So if you find yourself in communication land with other people, first of all, it's not a great time to be, you know, sharing your new ideas, your new thoughts. It's not a great idea to pre be presenting serious topics and themes. We are in the dark phase of the moon. So this is where, again, there's no illumination in the sky. We got to sit in the darkness, sit in the funk. This is a confusing time. It's time for us to kind of keep to ourselves. But if you do find yourself in a situation, in a circumstance where you have to be interacting with people with the world around you and, you know, serious conversations do come up, please just realize that the moon in Libra has you dimming your light, has you kind of biting your tongue because you don't want to rock the boat. Mercury, on the other hand, in Scorpio energy over here, trying to get you to flip tables, trying to get you honed in on the parts, the situations, the circumstances of situations gone by that rubbed you the wrong way that you failed to boss up and advocate for yourself. So this is where we kind of have to be a little bit hard on ourselves, especially in our inner narrative, our inner dialogue. We kind of got to beat ourselves up, break ourselves down so that we can boss up, be empowered enough to not dim our light, to not bite our tongue, to actually be a little bit more forthcoming with saying the things that we've been choking on for the last month ish. The moon in Libra then going to make a harsh interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, retrograde in his rulership in this Pisces energy. This is going to put us in a situation where we're not trusting our intuition. We're not listening to our higher selves. We're not trusting our gut. We're not even clear on what our goals actually are anymore. We're not even clear on the vision, on the dream that we were once excited about. Instead, we're being so overwhelmed with information, with emotion at this time, with a whole lot of revolving circumstances that, again, the moon in Libra has us running away from. When we move into the Scorpio energy, we're going to be running towards those problematic areas in order to fix them healed them, resolve them, but we're not there yet. And so now we just want to escape. We don't want to be a part of reality because being a part of reality means that we have to be looking at the things that we've been trying to turn a blind eye to. It means that we have to come to a certain term of acceptance, a realization that things have got to change. Things have got to end. And of course, the moon in Libra doesn't want to do any of that. We just want to stay in the shallow end of our emotions. We want to just pretend that everything is light and fluffy, rainbows and butterflies. And of course, we're in Scorpio season. So we know that that is just a distraction and a delusion away from the truth, away from reality, away from what actually is. The moon then going to make an awkward interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is definitely going to give us a harsh reality check. We kind of need it, especially as we're gaining momentum to the final degrees of Libra energy here as we're preparing to move into the moon in Scorpio. Again, moon in Scorpio means that we're already in the new moon window that, of course, will be popping off here on November 1st. And so the harsh reality check is coming at us because guess what? Somebody just popped our bubble. Our dreams, our delusions, our la la land, suddenly somebody just popped that and now we are faced with the harsh truth, the harsh reality, what we have to boss up into, where it is that we have roles and responsibilities, karmically speaking, to put an end to a lot of the situations and circumstances that again popped off during eclipse season that we've been trying to turn a blind eye to, that we've been trying to hope and pray just aren't coming to fruition, that now we have to have a reality check. Life is as it is, not for the way that we wished it would be. And we have a cleanup 
up in aisle five. We have to be tying up the loose ends, bringing certain chapters, certain closures to those chapters before we can actually move on. This new moon in Scorpio is about the change and transformation taking place in our soul and our spirit in order for us to boss up being empowered enough to do the hard things that currently we're trying to convince ourselves don't even exist. So things are going to get really interesting here around the, let's call it 9 a.m. to noon mark, meaning we get that reality check from Mr. Saturn, 914 a.m., again, Eastern Standard Time. 1057 a.m., we have the moon in Libra energy getting into the boxing ring, squaring off with Mars Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger. He's in cancer energy. Libra energy, cancer energy are both cardinal energies, thus the square. Cardinal energies want to hold on to what is tried, tested, and true. Want to hold on to what we've built, what we've already created, what we've already brought to life, what we've already tested. But now we're being faced with information and details that prove to us that we can't continue to do the same old, same old thing and continue to pray for a different result. So the moon interacting with Mars, definitely going to put ants in our pants, definitely going to anger us, put us in a frustrated state just before the moon enters into the boxing ring, squares off with Pluto. Pluto being the great transformer at the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of Capricorn energy. Again, Capricorn energy, Libra energy, the both cardinal energies, thus the square, thus the growing pain, thus the tension point. Now, we are definitely going to have our inner realm intensified with Mars and Pluto. Again, both of them being the rulers over Scorpio season. We have this energy kind of poking the bear, so to speak. There's a lot of inner tension, a lot of not so nice thoughts and feelings being triggered and activated. The pressure can feel like we are at in a, in a pressure cooker. We're reaching a boiling point. Again, that's how diamonds are made. But right now we're just feeling the pressure in our inner realm from the outside world. Why? Because Pluto's in this Capricorn energy at the final degree, the death degree, the mastery degree, the crisis degree, the karmic degree, giving us a couple of weeks to clean sweep what is left of the old world that the old version of self had built, had created, that the new version of self doesn't resonate with at all. So there is going to be this inner tension, this boiling point rising to the surface, the ugly parts of self now coming front and center. Why? Because this needs to be triggered and activated before the moon shifts into Scorpio energy, which at 1257 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that last aspect between the moon and Pluto, that is the last aspect that the moon in Libra is going to make. We're going void, of course. We sit in that void where things are shaky, things are unstable, things are uncertain until 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when we lock into Scorpio energy. We're in the dark phase of the moon. There's no illumination. There's no information. There's no realizations. There's no epiphanies. We're sitting with ourselves. The dark phase of the moon illuminates what isn't working, what we're tired of, where the triggers and activations are illuminating parts of us that we've been running from. Why? Because the new moon in Scorpio is going to help us change our inner realm to a vibration, a resonance, a frequency that empowers us to do the hard things that we've been avoiding in doing. So we lock into that Scorpio energy, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We sit in it until 5.29 p.m. when the moon in Scorpio is going to make its first interaction, which is a semi-square, not a favorable one. It's creating a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Sagittarius energy. We are not feeling good in our heart space. We are not feeling free. We are not feeling independent. We are not feeling like we have what it takes to rearrange our physical realms. We are not feeling safe, secure, supported. We are not feeling stable. We are not feeling sure about where it is that we're going. Lean into this uncertainty. You have to learn how to be okay with not knowing. The moon 
is going to take us into that heart space, bring up those activations, bring up those triggers, bring up that uncertainty. We're going to be sitting in it till 8.33 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The moon in Scorpio going to make the most beautiful interaction with Neptune, who, of course, is retrograde in Pisces energy, its rulership. And this is water on water action. Water energy cleanses us, it purifies us, it washes away the gunk, washes away the junk that, you know, for the most part, up until this particular point in the day, we've been sitting in the muck, we've been sitting in the funk, we've been sitting in the debris of the darkest parts of our thoughts and our emotions, just as we need to do in order to make a beautiful change. Just as water cleanses us, as it purifies, it then works on renewing, refreshing our soul, our spirit. It acts as a reminder to tap into our intuition, to trust our gut, to trust our higher selves. It gives us a download of why it is that we're doing what it is that we're doing, what it is that we're fighting for, the dream, the goal, the vision that now is coming in super clear that we're having a better understanding of. And in comparison to the funk in which we've been sitting in and carrying, this is going to be the contrast that we 100% need in order to figure out what it is that we can do, what we have power and control over in this present moment to get rid of, to close the door on, to remove, to release from our lives in order to create a space for the goals, the visions, the dreams to actually have a place to be built in. Now, the last thing that we got going on here today is Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Scorpio energy, our spidey senses, very much tingling. We have Mercury trining beautiful interaction with Neptune. So this is, again, water on water action, clearing out the gunk in our mental plane, clearing out the gunk in our eyes, preventing us from seeing things clearly using our intellect and our intuition. Now, this is going to inspire us. This is going to put us in a situation where we're hyping ourselves up in our inner realm because we have a little bit more clarity than we had in such a long time. We have new ideas. We have new perspectives. We have new information. We have new understandings. We have new creative solutions popping off. We have a new level of curiosity that is going to propel us to research, to learn, to kind of, again, continue with the detective hat, to kind of scrape the surface of this curiosity to see what it is that we want to learn more about. This is going to push us into, again, the spooky season, um, occult issues, if you will, spirituality, if you will, the taboo topics and themes that, again, many of us don't want to face, let alone talk about. This is where we start breaking down our delusions and get real and raw and vulnerable with the truth. We start seeing the potential. We start seeing the possibilities. And it really turns the volume up on our imagination. It also turns the volume up on our intuition and we're picking up on the subtle energies of the world around us. We're picking up on, I'm going to say, insight downloads that are giving us a hunch on what it is that we need to further explore. So because we're super hypersensitive, because Halloween is a super hypersensitive energetic portal, we're going to be picking up on a lot of different things, a lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings, a lot of downloads, a lot of visions. There's going to be, you know, just all kinds of weirdness. And you need to be prepared for this weirdness because it is going to be pushing us through the moon, the new moon in Scorpio energy. And so at this particular juncture, it's almost like we have a sense of knowing even though we know nothing, even though we can't articulate it. We have a sense of calmness, of peace, of contentment. We know things are going to be okay. We don't know why we know that things are going to be okay. Nothing has really changed in that particular regard. However, we just have this alignment taking place within us that is just reassuring to us that it, we are exactly where it is that we need to be, that we are going to be able to do all of the things on our to-do list. We don't know how, we just know that we will. We don't know what the ending is going to look like, but we trust that it's going to be for our highest benefit, our best selves. And at this particular point in time, we're just leaning into the fact that we trust not only ourselves, but the cosmos, but the universe. There is a renewed sense of hope, of faith, 
of good fortune, of wishes, of the ability to actually bring these goals, these visions, these dreams to life. <laughs>